How's it going, guys? It's Jose back again with another video on Human Raw, and today I want to talk about safe spaces. And I was thinking about this last time, how you know I I aspire, well I do, like any social media platform that I'm on, I essentially I make it a safe space. I go there and I express myself. I do things that terrify me. Legit, I do things that terrify me, and that some people might see that that might look out of the ordinary and things like that. But at the end of the day, I am a Pisces. You know, whether you believe in astrology or not, like. I just had too many things happen so that I do believe in astrology. Uh, and not like the mainstream astrology, but the true astrology when you go and you dive deep into all your charts, you know? Um, like I asked them the questions, I, I find out their charts and I see and I start to notice patterns. And eventually, if you do these things enough, you're, you're going to be able to predict some amazing things. Also, too, I have a lot of magical things that happen in my life. Um, things that I see, visions, and all that stuff. Whether I'm smoking or not. I have not smoked in like over a month now. And just because some people in my life thought that I was smoking too much and they felt that maybe I was dependent on it. And in, a little, in some ways I was. In some ways I was. Because I definitely was at a point where I was like, oh, if I'm not smoking, like food tastes better when I'm, when I'm high. Or music is better when I'm high. So it did kind of get a little dependent on those factors. Um, but they saw it as me uh, kind of using it as a way to escape. And for me... <clears throat> I don't like to have things outside of me be like a clutch. Once cannabis is a clutch for me, I typically take a break. Um, not through any coercion from anybody else, but just for me, I want to take a break. Let's see what it's like without cannabis for a little while. And that's very easy for me to do. Uh, for me, cannabis is not addictive, like some people will say. Um, I am um, I'm in love with life, bro. I'm in love with life. Um, and I've done many plant medicines that have allowed me to go within myself um, to also experience past lives and things like that. I've done that, and you know, I could see how some people would want to escape into that realm, or you know, be uh, being that sensation of being all I want in the universe and just keep chasing after that high. But even when I'm not in that. The, those altered states, I still, I'm still there, I know I'm there, and my higher self is always with me, always talking to me, speaking to me, my, angel, my angels are always with me, this is how I stay sane through everything that's going on right now, like my spiritual practice never ends, you know, whether I'm taking psychedelics or not, my spiritual practice is here, uh, even as sober, like I'm still having these mystical experiences, one benefit too from taking a break from cannabis is like my dreams when I sleep, so vivid, it's crazy. So some people, you know, they can still dream vividly while smoking, others don't. So everybody, everyone's world is different. Anyway, I'm getting away from why I started this video, but that's, I tend to do that. To me, everything is connected. So when I'm talking, I just, I, to me, like, there is no separation at all. Um, and this is why I believe safe spaces are so important. Um, um, the world that we live in right now, a lot of things that we have been taught, a lot of things that we have learned are just very toxic. And we have to break, we have to break away from that. Um, you can see it in our movies. You can see how everything, like a lot of things, are getting canceled. I'm not really big fan of cancel culture. Some of things getting canceled. I think it's kind of going out of hand. But at the same time, we're seeing why these things are being canceled, and it's like, why, why didn't we think about these things before? So we grew up with all these negative things, and a lot of these things have been, you know, we've taken them on onto our subconscious, and we do them without even knowing. And now we're we're literally trying to free ourselves. We're literally trying to free ourselves. This is a whole new world now. It's a whole new world. It is a whole new world, and some people are afraid of that. Some people are, most people are afraid of change. I love change. I embrace change. I'm a Pisces sun, Pisces moon, and Gemini rising. All immutable signs. I love change. I adapt to change. I want change. I want to learn. I, I want to grow. I don't want to be stagnant. I want. I don't want to do the same thing every day. Like there has to be a difference. And you know what? In life, things are always different. Never, things are never the same. Things are always moving. If you truly know about life, you know everything is energy. Everything is vibration. This table might be still right now, but its molecules is vibrating, are vibrating always. And there's so much that we can do in this world. There's a lot of change that we can make happen. And part of like that malleability of the universe is things are not as white and black as we say they are. Like as you can see, we're doing more different genders now. Um, more people are, are coming out. I think the big thing of like last year was coming out. Like a lot of people are coming out in so many ways. Not just about like being bis bisexual, gay, pansexual, or anything like that, but just coming out in general, saying things that they that, that they've hidden. The beauty of social media is that you can connect with people from all around the world and figure out, oh, you're not the only one like this. There are other people like you, and that can make you feel really good. 
uh, the downside of that as well, you can run into a lot of the hatred, a lot of the bigotry, a lot of the racism, sexism, the things that are going right now, that, that are going on, and that can just like pummel you. And I believe we have to do a better job of getting people ready for social media to realize that not everything on social media is real. And that it can be dangerous if you're absorbing these things and you're taking them as real. Like they should, yeah, hopefully in school they're training people about social media and how to handle it, to not take it as real, so that way they're not committing suicide or things like that. Like the cyber bullying that goes on. People are vicious on that. They're vicious. And I experienced this a lot when I stopped being vegan. Um, on my channel, I was doing veganism videos. I was all about. It. I was preaching it. You know, I come from a very religious background, so preaching is natural to me. Like once I pick up something and like that's my thing, boom, boom, boom. I like I try to get everybody on that. Um, but later on, I figured out that veganism cannot work for everybody. It just can't. It's just not possible um, with the way that things are. So, like once I went away from that, I got a lot of backlash, yeah, and I realized I was really uh, dependent on other people's validation and their support, and for them to like me, you know, people pleasing is something that I was really doing, and. You know, when you're veganism and you're doing those videos, you're doing those potlucks, getting people to go vegan, there's vegans that are going to validate you. They're going to give you all that. But then when you switch up, all that validation goes out the window. Not every single vegan friend of mine did that, um, but a lot did. Some of them still don't speak to me to this day. Um, so, like, that's not healthy. And you have to realize that, you know, at the end of the day, your validation is coming from yourself. It's, it's coming from outside of you. You're at the mercy of the world. You're at the mercy of other people. And that's not good. Validation from other people is great. It's, it's amazing. I trust me. I love it. But you have to be ready for like when that validation stops. Um, I lived most of my life like that, trying to do what I could to, val to be validated, um, trying to live in this box that it put for me. Look, look up the research and what it means like, to put yourself in a box. When you have to go and sign paper and say, oh, you're this, you're that, you're this, you're that. Oh, putting yourself in all these different boxes. So because I'm this, I have to do this. Because I'm this, I have to do that. You know, this one, I have to do that. And really, people do get enslaved. People get put in these boxes and they stay in those boxes. And some people fight to stay in those boxes. And labels help us to, you know, to communicate and everything like that. But sometimes even labels can be very toxic. And labels can be, you know, putting you in the box as well. So, yeah, it's a tough one. Um, so you have to realize validation needs to come from the thing. So constantly validate yourself, constantly fall in love with yourself, and just know that you know if that validation stops coming from out there, it should not affect you. Um, what other people are saying should not affect you. And I'm gonna give you one big example for this. I'm gonna put myself in the chopping block here. Something that I do at times, and I'm working to stop, is realizing that people project. People project their own emotions, their own feelings. If something's coming out of somebody, if, if there's a voice inside of them, a sound of them that's been saying that already for so many times, that's why it can be so easy for it to just come out. Like for instance, for me myself, when I grew up, I got called skinny a lot, so I'm very, I kind of led to a body dysmorphia for me not liking me skinny because I was just called skinny, and I feel like it was in a teasing way. But as a little kid, you don't know that it just, that, that they're just teasing you. Um, but it sucks. It really sucks. So I grew up with this body this month, and when I learned how to learn about fitness and working out, I got so big. I still love working out. I still love fitness. I still love like having a good size on me and everything. But at one point, like that's why I was working out. I wasn't working out just to be an optimal health. I was working out to grow with some size so that way, you know, one of my friends from Florida, he's still my friend to this day. I love him. But I remember him saying I had a bird chest. This was before I had my titties, you know, that I have now. Um, but he, called, he said I had a bird chest, and that, like, I stuck with me. So, like, I, I did it. I lifted weights to the point where, like, I was bigger than most of the people around me. I remember one time just sitting next to my uncle. He was like, man, how big do you think I'm getting? Like, like big? I'm not big. Um, but I, I got to face that. I got to face that body gets smokier. But it's still within me. And sometimes when I'm online and I see people that are on the skinnier side of things, a voice in my, my mind is like, oh, damn, they're skinny as fuck. Or, like, oh, they need to go lift some weights. Or they need to eat. You know, it's, it comes to my mind, and if I'm in a bad mood, I might just type that and start coming at them. You know, and that's not a good thing to do. That's essentially cyberbullying. Um, but through meditation and through just awareness and through just knowing that, just because a thought comes to mind doesn't mean that I need to express that thought. Some people have no control. Some people, a thought comes, <laughs> it gets thrown out, and that's why I do what I do. That's why I teach what I teach, and that's why I focus on the things that I focus on. Because in order to create a better world, we need to stop reacting and actually think. Use our breath to slow down. And 
to, to be able to treat each other better, not to be to people just not, not just to treat each other better, but to treat ourselves better. Because it all starts with ourselves. As we treat ourselves better, it'll be just natural to treat other people better. We can only treat other people as we treat ourselves. So if you see people, someone that's just treating people bad and whatever, just imagine how bad they are treating themselves and how much they're hurting themselves. When you say something harmful, something harsh, something mean, something nasty to somebody else, guess who also hears it when you say it? You do. Yourselves hear it. So the more good things you say throughout the day, throughout your life, the happier yourselves are going to be because your cells are being watered by what you're saying. But if you're saying vicious, having vicious thoughts, you're gossiping about people, talking crap about other people, hating on people. You know, in this world, like we've, we've, we've made it very easy to hate on people. We have the Bible that has taught us to hate a lot of people. You know, that's it to take a whole society, a whole group of people to just hate on them, to think that they're, they're worse than nothing. Like when these people are in the streets, when these people are homeless, when these, these people are getting killed, we don't even think about that. We don't even really worry about it, you know, because they're devils, they're demons, and things like that. And it's just, it's just harsh. Me. It's, a, it's a reality that I did not want to be a part of, and that's why, like, my social media pages are safe spaces. Now, some people are not gonna like that. They're gonna think like, oh, this whole new world is crazy. Um, Jesus is coming because you know the world's going to crap. The world's not going to crap. The world is kind of imploding upon itself because so many people have hidden who they are. They have been wearing these masks and they're tired of wearing these masks. Now we literally have to wear a mask now, you know. Um, but people have been wearing this this figuratively mask, you know. Like they've been hiding behind these masks and they want to be free. They want to be released. They want to free their spirits. And this will be good because this is gonna heal them. This is this is a healing time for people. Um, when it comes to like the LGBTQ plus community, um, beautiful way I think as time goes on, as we learn how the ancients did it before colonialism, before somebody these people came and told us how to live. Look up the term two spirited, um, where there are people that ex that express um, both masculine and feminine tendencies, and those people were revered. Those people were special, you know, um, and they had a special connection to to source, and that was a beautiful thing. So at one point, these people were loved, but then the white people, the colonizers, came and they said, "Oh, you got these people? I know these people. This is wrong." And they tried to tell them how to be. They told them that they were uncivilized. They told them that, that told them that their religion was barbaric and took their religion away, took their identity away, and gave them this book and told them to listen to this book. And come to find out, they used this book to justify slavery, and everyone believed it. So just slavery was justified. They used this book to make sure that women would be housewives, women would have to look good for their husband, women would have to submit to their husband, women couldn't, dis couldn't divorce their husband, and even if they were dealing with domestic abuse. They, this book justified all of that, you know? So as time goes on, as society is now evolving, we're getting away from that, and we're actually seeing that, no, that's not how it goes. And people are just trying to be themselves. People are like, because when you're trying to be someone who you're not, when you're trying to fit into this box, you're doing so much more work. And it, it messes you up. And then you see how the mental health right now is so bad. You try to blame it on TV, media, and all that kind of stuff. Blame it on video games, even. Blame it on that. Like, what, we, what we've created is not the, the bad thing at all. It's the attitudes that have been here, the things that, I've, that we have held on to. Again, the racism, the sexism, the homophobia, the biphobia, and all that stuff that we have held on to for so long. We're getting rid of it, and that's a beautiful thing, and I love that. So, and again, talking about safe spaces, like I literally thought at one point I'm thinking, man, am I like weak? Am I, you know, not strong enough to really want these safe spaces for people? Like, I should be tough. I should be able to. It doesn't matter if it's a space is not safe. You know, like I should be tough, and I should be able to go out in the world and whatever. But. We got, we got to think about the kids. Shouldn't we want the world to be a safer space for children, for women, right? And as we have more technology, as we become more civilized, why is it that there's still so much violence? Why is, why is it that there's still so much separation? As in society evolves, we should be getting rid of that, not adding more of it. Why is this world still not a safe place for women and children? And that's unfortunate. And why is femininity hated so much? Why is femininity seen as weak when we all have a feminine side to us? You know, and that's a big thing too, because you can be a man, and guess what? Once you're a man and you start dressing up as a woman, or you go, or you're a trans, or a man turns to a woman, you realize, oh, now the world's a much more dangerous place. 
you know, like trans people are getting murdered and nobody does anything about it, nobody cares because they're abominations, quote unquote. So for me, I fight justice for all. There was this TEDx talk about this man, this crossdresser, he can go as man or woman, um, but he said that he prefers to stay as a man because the world is safer that way. It, it, you know, the world would be like, there's just less violence, there's less things that you have, you have to worry about. And that's a shame. So like, and again, that goes back to how we are doing things, how we saw women, we saw women as submissive, we saw women as property. So the way we treat women has to stop. And I believe now that we are opening up more and men, more men are expressing their feminine sides and they're kind of sometimes more so going into that submissive role. And then they can also see how men, how the attitudes of men are, how men, and you know, treat women and, or treat women as feminine or being plus submissive. They can be like, okay, no, this has to stop. This is not how you treat another human being. And that's the beautiful thing. We, we need to start seeing people not just as a sex, as a gender or whatever, but as spirit. And our spirit, the, the, from the time it comes here, from the time that it leaves, our spirit doesn't age. Our body goes from being a baby to like whatever, but our spirit doesn't age. So that spirit should be treated with compassion as a spirit its whole life, you know? And in the world that we live in right now, Women are, like, babies are not even treated well. Kids are not treated well. You see what they do with children? Some people still justify being their children. You know? So we got, we're talking about trauma, upon trauma, upon trauma. We, we glorify um, becoming successful through the trauma and how, like, the trauma and the challenges that we go through is what shapes us to be, like, strong and all that. But it's a lot of toxicity. And we have to go towards growing a world through love, compassion, and, and nurture. Where the feminine is in, is embraced, where the feminine is cherished, where the feminine, because that's the creation, that's the creative power of the world. So that if the creative power is being beaten and you know hated on, seen as weak, seen as less than, and that's where our children come from, the world's not going to go too far. So in all the stuff that's going on right now, for me, in my opinion, it is beautiful. I'm seeing a lot more expression, and I've seen this. I've seen this in my visions, I've seen, I've felt it. And I look at other people, I felt it too. There's people out there fighting and supporting other people. They're supporting spirits, they're supporting humans, they're supporting the spiritual growth of, of individuals to express themselves, to be as they are, and to bring more love into the world rather than division. And for me, love, God is love. So there's, there's more God going on right now. There's, there's more love, and I love it. Love is love, that's my message for the day, y'all. Uh, let me know what you think about uh, this video, if you have anything to say. Um, these are the kind of topics that I love to talk about, but I feel they do, they do not get spoken on enough, you know? So, I'm going to leave you with that. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And for more videos like this one, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, before I leave too, I am part of this yoga contest going on right now by Yoga Warrior. And the winner gets to take feature on the cover of the magazine and also wins $10,000. And typically these magazines, I feel they don't, you know, you're not going to see many people of color on yoga magazines or anything like that. And part of this too, I think Lulu Lemon's a part of it. I want to be on the cover to be able to, to talk about the history of yoga and bringing yoga back to the people that it came from, you know, and seeing more people of color doing yoga because we need it. You look at the research, you look at the statistics and the way that the world is right now. And speaking of energy, how racism is still relevant and all around. And it affects us on a, on an en on, a, on an energetical level, you know. Like that's why we're so prone to diseases. And stuff. So it's time for all people to see more people doing this, and for black people to also to be free, not just to get to be free from out from without from other people allowing us to be who we are and allow allowing us to express ourselves in more ways. But we have to free ourselves. And for me, yoga, yoga has allowed me to. to travel through my own body, through my own soul, and experience different parts of me, and I'm bringing all those parts together. Yoga is to yoke, to yoke the spirit. This is to put the spirit back together. So as black people, we have to we have to bring our communities back together. We have to come together, and one way we can do it individually, we bring ourselves back together, we bring more love into our hearts, we get rid of the stagnant energy, of the stiffness, and all the trauma that we hold, and then we can be together. So, yeah, help me out. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below. You can vote every day. Voting goes up until March 18th. So, you can do a free vote through Facebook. And uh, tell me when. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.